everyone, Papa Red, Papa Red Fishing. So it's about time we get back into uh, building some more lures. Got a little sidetracked over the weekend. My son and I went and bought a little 14 foot aluminum boat and we've been working on that. So um, anyway, we took it out yesterday and I got a pretty good idea for our next lure build. Uh, I was kind of trying to target the crappie, but uh, still a little too cold here in Illinois for the crappie to really get moving. Uh, saw a couple bluegill, nothing big. So. Water's still real cold here, but I want to be ready. As soon as those crappies start to hit, I want to have something that uh, that I can throw out there and it's going to catch their eye. So I think what we're going to do this time around, you've already seen the title, so you know what we're doing. Um, we're going to use some balsa wood, and we're going to make a micro crankbait. And we're going to paint it up and make it look nice and juicy for those, uh, those spring crappie. So anyway, got a block of balsa here. Uh, I've got a, a sketch we're going to work on, and uh, let's get going. Let's get this thing ready. I want to be ready for some... Some spring crappie action. All right, so these are a couple of little crankbaits that I made a while ago. Um, I made these out of oak, and they've got some action. Um, you can see the lips, not huge, but um, I like this shape. I like this size. I think we might go a little bit smaller. Uh, I was throwing this one yesterday, and I was getting hits, but nothing was hooking up. I think it was just a little bit too big for the bluegill that we're trying to hit it, uh, and I don't think the crappie were really trying yet. So I think we're going to do something similar to this. We're going to do a little bit fatter body and a little bit shorter. Um, it look like a football, and we're going to try going with these, you know, little tiny hooks and maybe a little bit bigger lip. So I want this thing to really, you know, have a lot of action when it's going through the through the water. So let's catch something out and see what we can come up with. You know, I figured making a smaller bait like this would be nice and easy. 
and quick. I think I'm spending more time moving the bait around in my hands and readjusting because it is so small than I would be just flat out sanding a bigger bait. Plus, big guy like me with big old sausage fingers, starting to hurt. Okay, all sanded. I think we're gonna use a through wire on this because there's not a whole lot of meat in this thing and I don't wanna take a chance of uh, a screw and I pulling out of this bait if we get a decent sized little fish on there. So let's start making that. All right, so we've got our through wire slot cut in there. It's almost centered. We're going to take a little bit off of this side to center that. For something this small, I want to make sure it's nice and balanced. So we're going to sand that off real quick and get started on this this wire. All right, so we just dremeled out one little spot. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the hook trail right behind the, where the lead hole's at, and then of course the one in the back. But I just made this lead hole big enough. We're gonna put just one steel BB in there. And uh, hopefully between that and the hooks, it'll be enough to, to keep it upright in the water. Um, but we're just gonna take this BB and we'll just push it down in there into that hole we'll make it a little bit bigger but uh, I'm hoping that would be enough to keep that up right all right so there's our through wire pull that out of there and see what it looks like so that's gonna end up with that hook right in front of the, the BB hole I almost got ahead of myself. You were probably yelling at me too, weren't you? So I super glued the back with the baking soda. Almost super glued the front. Still gotta make a lip. So I wanna go with a little thinner lip on this and I need to order some thinner Lexan. But before all the stores closed, all I could find at, I don't remember which big box store it was, but I found this stuff called non-glare plascolite. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It seems fairly flexible, but in the smaller areas, like it would be for a lip, it's pretty solid. So I know it's going to work for a lip. I don't know if it's going to hold up. All right, well, here's the lip. I think it turned out pretty good. I think we're gonna 
instead of going with the rounded style, we're going to go with the coffin lip. Fits in there real nice. But uh, I figure we'll try this, see what the coffin lip does. And if we don't like it, we can always round it off. Can't go back the other way. So let's get this uh, glued in there and finish up with this uh, baking soda and super glue and get this thing sealed up. Okay, we're all sealed up. We got our hooks, our split rings. Moment of truth. Let's see if this thing floats or what it does. Hmm, that should work. Sitting nice and upright, and I think that's going to crank it down. Proceed as planned. Okay, all sanded, ready for paint. We are going to make this bright. These things are gonna see this coming a mile away. So let's get this, uh, some white on here and start pulling out some colors. It's gonna be fun. So I think that's what we're gonna go with. Start on the bottom of the belly with yellow, go to some fluorescent orange, fluorescent pink, and then go to uh, some pearl plum. We're gonna try and do four colors on that little guy. Hope my airbrush is up to the task. Let's get started. Right, the white's done. And just to say, this took me a lot longer than I wanted it to. Because sometimes, once you put a coat of white on, you realize just how bad your sanding job was. And I was not going to keep going. There's a few flaws here, but the clear coat will cover that. It's mostly green. So, anyway, I had to go back and re-sand everything and reshoot it. So, white's done. Let's move on to the uh, fluorescent yellow. So I really don't know how detailed I want to go with this. I mean, this is a nice transition. I don't know if you guys can really see that. I mean, it almost looks like a color shift, the way it rolls. I think I want to do some marks on the side, some lines, and then we'll maybe a little gill pattern, and then highlight around the eyes. So let's play this by ear, see how it turns out. have it before we put the eye in. See. Got a nice shift in the color. Little ghost stripes with the gold. Little shadow for a gill. Let's throw the eyes in here. Put this thing in some clear coat.
All right, let's get this thing clear coated. Yep, there it is. That clear coat really brought out those gold stripes. But uh, I think it looks good. Let's get this thing on a fishing pole, find some water, see what it does. Alright, so here we are down at the, uh, the creek down the street from my house. Definitely not the ideal fishing spot, but it's a good testing spot. Uh, so here we are, we've got the micro crankbait. So I already dropped it in, it looks pretty good. I'll let you guys see the action. See it kind of just floats there on the surface, but as soon as you start to pull it, it's got a nice wobble. So we'll throw this thing out there and see if we can't get a little something. It's got a nice side to side wobble. See what we can do. Now when we get back to the shop, I'm going to throw a little tiny split ring on the tip of this, on the line tie. I've noticed uh, it wants to track a little bit to the side, but in the past if I've uh, thrown a sp split ring on there, that straightens it out. So we'll do that when we get back. It's still tracking good. See if we can catch something. All right, well, I think we're going to wrap it up for this spot. Don't think we're going to catch anything. Nothing's moved in here yet from the river. This is the first day I've been out here with actually without a sweatshirt on. The water's still pretty cold, so hopefully another week or so the small mouth will start moving in. If that's the case, we might be able to get a little something out of here. We're not too far from the mouth of the river here, but... Still nothing going on yet, so I don't know that I'm going to make it out anywhere else. We might call this a wrap on this video. So we're going to head back to the bait shop, wrap this thing up. All right, well, we're back at the bait shop and yeah, didn't catch anything. I stayed there for another half hour or so, tried some different spots, some different holes. There's just nothing in there. I'm not seeing any bait fish or anything. So uh, it is starting to warm up. So that's good news, but uh, we're going to be getting this thing out sometime real soon. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. If I changed anything, I think I might put one more BB in there, uh, make it a little bit more stable, but there's really nothing wrong with this. That might make it dive a little bit more. Um, this lip, you can see it's got pretty steep angle on it, so it really kind of almost acts like a lipless. Um, and it doesn't really want to dive, so I could change that angle a little bit if I wanted to go deeper, but I'm... This, it runs about a foot, foot and a half deep, and what, out of my club, uh, that should be plenty to really start enticing some bluegill and some crappie. So I'm real happy with it. Um, let's hope this weather keeps up and warms that water up. Uh, I think we might, uh, since we had so many 
lures that were put together when it was cold and in, in the winter. Uh, really didn't have a chance to do anything but go out and just test the action on them. I think we might do a video pretty soon here once the bite starts up um, where we'll take a lot of these lures out and just fish them. We'll get out in, in one of the boats and, and just go to town with them, start uh, seeing what's working and what's not for this time of year. Um, and then uh, we'll follow, follow uh, these videos up with uh, some actual fishing videos with these things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I know I enjoy building this. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to fishing with this. So anyway, uh, thanks everyone for your support. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Papa Red Fishing. And uh, if you know anyone who might enjoy this content, please feel free to, to pass this on and uh, share it with you, with your friends and relatives and even people you don't like. I don't care. So anyway, thanks again. Uh, we will see you next time.